Hey guys, well, <laughs> hey guys, hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? For today's video, I wanted to share with you guys my eyeshadow palette collection. I've never did a full dedicated eyeshadow palette collection at all. I've done eyeshadow palette declutter videos. I'll have those linked down below if you guys want to watch those. And I've done like full in-depth makeup collection videos, but I haven't actually done like an in-depth eyeshadow palette collection i love anything and everything palette related so i figured today would be a perfect day to share with you guys all that i have i'll show you how i like like i organize everything i have some palettes on my shelves and some in my drawers i'm really excited about this one i hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started wait so firstly i wanted to show you guys that i recently hooked up this space i'm loving how it's turning out all right with the beeps let me tell you okay so moving into the first drawer first palette up is the artist couture supreme nudes palette here is what this one looks like really gorgeous for a nice neutral look we get matte and metallics in here and really enjoy the formula it's a solid one next i have one of the pat mcgrath palettes so this one right here has six shades i don't tend to use this way too much i like the fact that it's more of like a rosy tone palette i do gravitate towards those colors generally but just haven't given this one as much love as i would like but it's still really pretty the next palette that i have up is this right here by kaleidos this is the escape pod palette this is gorgeous tons of like duo chromes in here we get mattes as well and i feel like this looks really pretty on the eyes kaleidos doesn't have my favorite formula ever but um i feel like their color stories are very very unique so i do gravitate towards their palette Next up, we have the Venus XL palette here from Lime Crime. I know that we're starting to find these palettes at TJ Maxx and Marshalls. I've had this in my life for ages, though. I purchased it from Ulta, and I love this for a nice uh, berry toned look. Next, we have the Venus XL 2 palette. So the sister palette to the previous one I just spoke about. This is nice. It's not one that I use as often as I would like. I don't know why, really. I mean, there there's just like really nice early tones in here, so I'll have to dip into this. Um, more often next i have the venus 3 palette here this is also one that we are finding at tj maxx and marshall's this is my favorite eight pan palette from lime crime especially because the shade beam is just so gorgeous on the lids it really amps up any look um every time i use this i'm fully obsessed with the with the look i created i also have the venus palette so the og this was one that i really didn't enjoy for a long time like they are berry tone shades but i felt like for some reason the undertones on them just didn't work out well for me um, so it's not my ultimate favorite, but occasionally I'll pop into this. Then I have the Venus Immortals palette. This is the newest um, lime crime palette to my collection. I haven't played around with this way too much. I'll be honest, I'm kind of scared of the shades. I just feel like it'll it'll look like someone punched me kind of thing, you know? But I know it has like a lot of potential and it's a beautiful cool tone palette. So I know it has a lot to offer. Um, I need to make time to use this more. Then I have the Berries palette here by Juvia's Place. So this one right here pretty much just includes a bunch of berry tone shades. We get matte and metallics. I haven't found one palette from Juvia's Place that I was fully in love with. This one I like. I'm not super obsessed with it. I feel like the formula is a little bit dry for me. I feel like they don't blend out as easily as I would like. So not one that I reach for too often, but yeah, still one that is in my life for now. <laughs> Next, I have the Jeffree Star Mini Breaker Palette. This right here was a favorite of mine for a very long time. It was one of those palettes that just instantly inspired me because of the shade Oral right over here. It is so pretty. I feel like I didn't really, like I wasn't as adventurous with maybe eyeshadow palettes or colors in general, but kind of com kind of combining all of these together really just created something so beautiful. So I do really like this one. This right here is the Too Faced Peanut Butter and Jelly Palette. Love this little guy. I don't use this one too much. I really keep it for nostalgic reasons. The color story is fun. It's a nice neutral palette. I did use it, whoop, I did use it a ton like when it came out and I felt like I could do a lot with it. It was limited edition, so I don't tend to use it way too much, but I still think it's so cute, and I'm happy to have it in my life still. Whoops, it smells really good too. This right here is the Violet Voss 6 color eyeshadow palette. I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of the Violet Voss formula. I feel like it's very cheaply made, and I just don't love it. I got this in Boxy or Ipsy, and it probably will be one that I'll declutter one, the next, like in my next declutter, but for now, it's in my life. This right here is the Makeup Revolution Nudes Chocolate Palette. Rufka actually gifted this to me, one of my best friends, and as you guys can probably see, it's brand new. <laughs> didn't have a chance to use it. I think you could do a lot with this for like a day-to-day -day look, you know? So 
I'll probably give it a go one of these days. Next, I have this right here from CoverGirl. This is such an OG. This was my first eyeshadow quad ever, ever, ever. I like legit went ham on this shade. I don't use it anymore. It's just one that I keep for nostalgic reasons because I think I got this when I was, I want to say 16 or 18 years old. This right here is the Naked Urban Decay Petite Heat Palette. Love this little guy. I actually haven't given it much love recently. Um, but now that I'm actually making this video, I'm like feeling more inspired by certain pieces. I love this palette because you get a selection of matte um, warm tone shades. And then this right here is more like a satin finish. Looks stunning on great formula and it's a good one. I really do enjoy it. And then I have this I Love palette here from the Sephora collection brand. I love this palette. Really provides so much. You get your nice, more like burnt like warmer tones in here not too too orange more coppery i would say such pretty browns and then this black you can use to deepen things up every time i wear this i'm like i literally i'm like i'm feeling myself you know so the previous palette was called medium warm this right here is medium cool this one i didn't use as much but i still really love like the color story here i love um the browns the metallic shades like this beautiful gold this would just be so perfect for like a night out even for like a wedding like a friend's wedding or something i think the formula of these isla palettes are pretty good they're not my ultimate favorite but you can get really gorgeous looks with them next i have the nabla miami lights palette glitter palette here basically this is so pretty to top over any eyeshadow look kind of got to be careful with the glitters because they're very pc but it really does amp up like any look and kind of takes your makeup game to the next level a little bit goes a long way as well i like to apply these mainly with my finger to kind of dot it on sometimes i'll use a Too faced shadow insurance glue apply that on and then this will adhere even better to the lid so really really love this guy and also i love the packaging next we got this huda beauty ruby obsessions palette this is one that i use when i want to go for more of like that reddish type of look we get matte and metallics in here not the easiest palette to work with it's decent it's okay for the price especially i think you could do a lot with this one so i'll use it from time to time then we have the amethyst obsession palette here which i think i like more than the ruby one i just think that these tones just look so beautiful on the eyes with this one also you get matte and metallics and every time i use this i'm pretty happy again not the easiest formula ever 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 i want to say the nine pen palettes are different than her bigger palettes but still very pretty then I have this right here from Pixie. So I don't really gravitate towards this one way too much. Either I'll use like the Urban Decay uh, single loose glitters or I'll use the Nabla one. This one here, this right here has such a gritty feel so I don't feel so inspired by it. And I feel like the glitters are so fine that they're gonna go on my eye and I'm scared of that. So um, yeah, I don't use it way too much but I might play around with it a little bit more to see what I can do with it because these are so pretty and also with this it does amp up any look. Next we have the Lawless The Baby One palette. This is one of my favorites. Gorgeous. I've been speaking about this so much. Not necessarily super recently but you guys saw me speak about this way too much. I feel like beautiful tones, two metallics, six mattes. You can use four of these for one look. You can use these for one look. You can kind of mix and match. Easy formula to work with. Great on the eyes. I've used this for more dramatic looks, lighter looks, and fully obsessed. Such a good one. Next, I have the e.l.f. Rose Gold Nude Palette here. This right here is okay. It's not my ultimate favorite. I feel like for the price, it's not bad if you like these kind of tones. I know they provide a bunch of these palettes in different color stories. I haven't tried much, but I could speak for this one. And I mean, like I mentioned, it's it's good, but not, my, not one that I really reach for way too much. Uh, but if you do like these specific tones, I feel like you could get a nice look um, just by using these shades. So this is one that I purchased from TJ Maxx a while ago. It's the Profusion uh, Cosmetics Palette. I don't even remember what I think about this. I think I maybe used it once a while, while, while ago. Let's open you up. Um, I do love the tones in here. It's kind of reminding me of like the Sephora palette, like with the black and the warmer toned, berry toned um, mattes. I might give this a go, but it also might be one that I might declutter in my next declutter video. I don't feel as inspired by this one. Next, we have the Persona Color Theory Copper Palette. I used to use this legit pretty much daily for a significant period of time. This is so nice on the eyes. I love Persona's formula, especially with these five pan palettes. She has this one and like a pink one. Still have to get my hands on the pink one, but... I love this. You get three mattes and then two metallics. You can do a lot with it even though it's, it only includes five shades. It looks stunning. Legit stunning on the eyes and 
I, I just, I'm really, I'm, I love it so much. This right here is from Pat McGrath. It's one of her little palettes. This is the Sublime palette. You get a selection of neutral shades in here. I love to use this in conjunction with other palettes because you mainly get like metallics and a satin in here, two satins. So I don't reach for it way too often because usually I like one palette for everything. But, but from time to time, I'll dip into this to kind of pop uh, some of the shades on the lids. And it's really, it's like boom, bam, baby vibes. Really good. And then we have this one right here in Subversive. And here's what this one looks like. So in here we get um, brighter shades and with this one I pretty much will do the same use it in conjunction with other palettes Sometimes I'll use it as a one swipe swatch situation kind of thing, but usually I'll mix it with other palettes Okay, and then moving on to this drawer here. Let's get started So starting with what's in the back like I mentioned I do have like the bigger palettes here It's not the most convenient way to organize it I will say because I have to always like pull out but they're like really big So I don't know how else to store it really for now okay i guess so i do have the fade into hue eyeshadow palette here from ColourPop. i've used this only i want to say once or twice and i felt like it was a little bit hard for me to create looks with it i don't know i felt like the formula was pretty dry and i wasn't vibing with it but i still want to give it a little bit more time because i'm just in love with the color story it really inspires me and i know it has so much potential so we'll see next i have the Ofra cosmetics boho palette i do have a code with Ofra cosmetics it's just leora for 20 percent off site wide anytime but here is what this palette looks like i actually created a look using this on their channel if you guys want to check it out but you basically get a selection of um pa uh, palettes i was about to say you get a selection of eyeshadows uh bronzer uh blushes and then some highlighters as well it's like an all-in-one situation pretty nice quality i'll use it from time to time next i have the profusion sienna's palette i think that this one is pretty good for how affordable it is i really really love the color story i haven't given it um like a ton of love i would love to change that change that but i would say for the price really not bad you get tons of metallics tons of mattes and it's 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 really decent for again the price tag next i have the tati beauty eyeshadow palette here the volume one i used to use this so much i actually use it on a lot of clients as well i like it it's not my favorite palette ever but Anytime I use it, I do really love like how the eye looks. I haven't used it in a major hot minute, let me tell you. I don't know what it is. Maybe I forgot about it a little bit. But it's a nice one to still have around. You get a lot on here. It's a good neutral palette with tons of different finishes. Next, I have the Profusion Mirage palette. I think that they sent this to me in PR. But I want to say that I think they took me off their PR list because I wasn't really speaking about their products, really. Um... Maybe that's the case, but um, I haven't used this way too much. I, I was inspired by this, but wasn't at the same time. The only shade I really love in here and I find to be pretty unique is this one, but there's some really like thick, heavy glitters in here, which sometimes turn me off. So maybe that's why I haven't reached for it much, but it's, it's nice. It's decent. I have to give it more love because I think it has potential. Next, I have the Jaclyn Hill palette. So this was the original OG palette she released with Morphe. You guys can see it's pretty beat up. It was well, well, well loved. Whenever I use this palette, I pretty much stuck to this region of the palette. Very pretty. Sometimes I would use these, but I typically focus on most of the neutral shades. This was like my date night out palette for a while. And then I found other palettes that I actually enjoyed more. So this was one that I enjoyed a ton when it came out. And I, I like there was a lot to do with this one. These days, I don't use it way too much, not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, it's just chilling in here for now. I'm just thinking about my next declutter, if it's one that I'm gonna declutter or not. Next up, I have the BH Cosmetic Zodiac palette here. I love horoscopes. I love everything like that. I am a Scorpio. I love mentioning it because people never believe me, but I'm like, why is there such a negative connotation associated with Scorpios, huh? Like my best friend is a Scorpio too, Rifka, and I just feel like, I don't know, they're cool, you know? Anyway, I love this palette. I think it's pretty good. You get baked shadows on the outside, a highlighter, and then mattes here. I was so shocked with how beautiful this looks on the eyes. I did not expect it. I'll be honest. I thought it was going to suck. But every time I use it, I'm like, you know what? Wow. Like, I'm so impressed. I feel like I had this vision um, with BH Cosmetics. Not really a vision, but I have this thought sometimes that their products suck. Because I remember when I first started out with makeup, maybe like seven, eight years ago, their products, not going to lie, kind of sucked. But they definitely amped up their game and I would love to change that thought process because they really have nice pieces. And this right here is a true representation of what a nice, good, affordable palette is. The final Hue Jungle palette I have here is this right here by Jeffree Star. It's the Blood Lust. Here is what this palette looks like. This kind of got me into like purple shadow, I want to say. Like... I always liked purple shadow to an extent, but I wasn't fully obsessed. When I used this, I was like, you know what? Wow, like you look pretty good. 
Um, I've used this a decent amount of times. You could create beautiful looks with this. I feel like the packaging is a vibe, but it's also kind of huge at the same time. So it would have been cooler if it would have been maybe a little bit smaller now that I've had this for a while. But good color story. Pretty unique. Like, especially the metallics in here are very, very pretty on the eyes. I have the Melt Cosmetics Millen Millennial Pinks palette. Here is what this beauty looks like. This is an okay one. I feel like it's way too pigmented for my life and you guys know I go very heavy handed very fast and this right here kind of like put me to my test because it was like whoa you know you need a drop of this it goes the longest way ever I thought the looks I created with this were nice but I was never like fully obsessed and I was never like feeling myself with this one I still think the color story is unique I could probably mix it with other palettes I, I would love to make it work even more so but it's really not one that I am obsessed with I also have the Mel Cosmetics Rust palette here too I like this one a bit more just because I feel like the color story speaks to me a little bit more, I guess. Also, um, for some reason, I just find that most of these tones go well with each other, so they're easier to kind of build up, if that makes sense. Um, we get more mattes in here than metallics, but really pretty on the eyes. If I'm going for that rustic look, I'll pull this out. Next, I have a bunch of the EBH palettes. This is the Soft Glam palette. The memory I have associated with this is um, I used this for my brother's wedding a little bit ago, but this is really pretty, uh, very soft shades. You can do a lot with this one. It has more of like a rose gold vibe to it. And um, there are a bunch of different finishes. I think this looks stunning for a nice soft glam look. Very pretty. And you can also amp things up because you do get a deep black in here as well. And then other deeper shades too. I don't even know how this like became this way. But this is the Norvina ABH palette. This is probably my favorite from the palettes that I own from ABH. Love the tones in here. This is so pretty. If you were contemplating on this one, it's beautiful. The shade Wild Child is gorgeous. Celestial is also one of my favorites. Basically, the whole top row is metallics, and then we have a full row of mattes. These complement each other beautifully. Gorgeous for a day to day look, but also gorgeous if you want to spice things up. A plus. Then I have the ABH Carly Bible palette. My friend Rivka calls her Carly Bible. I'm like, I think it's Bible. And she's like, I don't know why, but Carly Bible like reminds me of you. I feel like you guys look alike. I'm like, honestly, I don't see it, but thank you. That's a massive compliment. And I do love this one a lot. I don't tend to use it way too much, but I just love the tones and shades in here. And I, I feel so inspired by it. Next, we have the Sultry palette here, one of my favorites. I've decluttered a decent amount of ABH palettes, so the few that I have, I really do love. This is just such a good one. It's like such a good one. Uh, I think this was like um, the breakthrough for like cool toned shades. I was kind of hesitant with like cooler toned shades like these in the beginning, but I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of rocking this. I'm like feeling it. With this one, we get more metallics than matte, but everything kind of combined together just looks stunning on the eyes and I would say I usually use this for more dramatic-ish looks. I don't tend to use this if I want to go for more of a natural look. I then have this palette here from Odin's Eye. And I want to say the color story is beautiful. How gorgeous is that? I think that their shadows actually perform pretty nicely. I don't reach for this as much as I would like. I'm not really sure exactly why. But I think they do an amazing job by um, kind of combining certain shades together to create really cool palettes. And um, their mattes and metallics do perform well. Next, we have this palette right here by Odin's Eye as well. Here is what this beauty looks like. Very different than like what I'm used to, but it kind of does take me out of my comfort zone. So I think this one's a pretty good one. Next, we have this Alamad palette here. I really, really love this. Here is what it looks like. I know that they have a purple tone palette out now, which I need to get my hands on. I've been saying it for the past year, but I don't know. It just I need to do it already, but I think this is good. It has four uh, matte shades, four like metallic -y tone shades. They pair really well with each other. I think this is especially gorgeous going into the spring months. Next, I have the Jeffree Star Thirsty palette here. One of my subscribers, Izzy, actually um, gifted this to me, which I thought was so sweet of her. She legit went to the mall for me to pick this up. What an absolute sweetheart, let me tell you. So here we get. Um, five mattes on top, five on bottom, and then metallic shades in the middle. I have to say, very inspired by this one. I think that this, the quality of this palette is beautiful. The mattes blend out amazingly, and the metallics are really intense and gorgeous on the eye. You guys know my obsession with Huda Beauty in general, but especially her like bigger palettes are yum. I think I got this in her mystery box or yeah, mystery box. That I, f that I unboxed a few months back. I recently unboxed newer mystery boxes by her and I got this again, but I gifted that palette to Emma and she's so excited to use it, but I love this. The metallics in here are on another level. We get metallics and mattes, a nice selection of both. I would say what, nine of each, which I think is cool. You really can do so much with this one. The, the possibilities are really endless and the formula of her, especially like again, metallics, 
seriously on another level heaven heaven next we have the huda beauty new nudes palette this right here is just a beautiful palette to use on more of those like natural days we get metallics in here so like these shades are metallics i think it's so cool and then we get two more like pressed glitters they're very pc i don't love those but the mattes in here are stunning it definitely leans more towards like the mobby toned family side i would say once these shades are on the eyes to the most part but you can get a pretty nice neutral nude look with this as well i love it I repurchased this because I ended up decluttering it a bit ago if you guys watched my declutter video. And it was one palette that I was so sorry that I decluttered. I just legit could not sleep at night, okay? So I ended up repurchasing it. I told you guys I mentioned that, so I confessed. And then uh, this is the final bigger palette I have from her. I definitely want to get like all at some point, but this is the Mercury Retrograde Palette. And this is one that I received in her advent calendar. Also very nice. Not my favorite from the bunch that she has, but you can really do a lot with this one too. It's a bit more out there. You get more of like those jewel toned uh, metallic shades in here. And I usually tend to use this for more of like a dramatic look, but I've used this for more neutral looks as well. And I mean, I did that last time and you guys complimented me to no end. I thought the look was like decent, but you guys were obsessed. So it really has the best of both worlds. Then I have a bunch of these BH Cosmetics like ice cream palettes i gifted one to emma but i do have five here this right here is the orange sorbet i picked these up mainly to do like monochromatic looks so anytime i want to go for an orange look like i'll either pull this one out or a ColourPop orange palette i would say generally across the board these are not my favorite like palettes to work with not the best formula ever i know colors are really hard to do but when you do give these palettes a little bit of extra time you could create a pretty nice look so i have this one next i have cotton candy I also say that some of the shades just seem really thick, especially the metallic, so a little bit annoying, but overall, like, you could still create looks with these. This right here is called Cherry on Top, so a redder tone palette. I have this for the reds, I would say, and then the Huda. I like this one a little bit more, I'm thinking, because I like that they included this really, really deep shade. It has like almost like a bronze undertone. It's so nice. Next up, we have the Pistachio Palette, which basically is a green palette. So nice. I mean, ice cream is one of my favorite foods, or at least it used to be, so these are cute. And then we have Bubble Gum, which is basically a blue palette. There was also, like I said, a neutral palette, and that one is one that I gifted to Emma. I don't even know what she thinks about it. I have to ask her. Emma, please let us all know down below. But then I wanted to share with you guys my naked palettes. I did mix these up because I'm going to be ranking them, and I don't want you guys to like see which one I love most. And I, You probably know if you watch my videos, but... Um, yeah, let me show you guys what these are about. So we firstly have this baby right here. This is the Naked Ultraviolet palette. Here is what this one looks like. I'm not going to go too in-depth because then I feel like you guys are going to know which one I love most and which one I don't love as much. But here we have Mealy Metallics Some Mattes Purple Tone Palette. Next we have the Cherry Goodness palette here by Urban Decay as well, the Naked line. Here is what this one looks like. They're basically a monochromatic palette which includes tons of cherry toned shades. Then we have the Naked Reloaded, which is, I would say the packaging is definitely different than the other ones. I wish they would have kept it the same, but this is what, here's what this one looks like, similar to the um, Sultry Palette by ABH. Next, we have the Urban Decay Naked Wild West, which is the newest one to their line. I did do a first impression on this. Here is what this beauty looks like. It includes um, cool and warm tone shades combined together. It's a world of heaven. Love you. This right here is the Naked Heat. Another monochromatic moment palette here. This just pretty much includes a bunch of warmer toned fiery RNG brown tone shades. I also have the original Urban Decay Naked palette, the OG palette that started it all. I got this years, years, years ago. It's the like original one that I purchased when I was, I think, 19. I don't really use it as much because it's so old, but it'll hold a special place in my heart, so I probably would never get rid of it. Whoa. But um, here's what this one looks like. And Naked Honey, this is just like my baby. I love you. Let me tell you the way this looks on the eyes. Cannot be be heaven. Okay, now moving over to the side of my shelves, I have these Kaleidos palettes. So this right here is in Lunar Lavender. I love the packaging of their, um, like, yum. Like, that magnet, magnet is so strong. I love the packaging of their six pen palettes. The color story of this one is so pretty. Love the name of this one. This right here is called Sh Shasimi City. I think that's how you say it. And then, oopsies, here's what this one looks like. So definitely more of like a neutral tone palette. But there's such a vibe to this one. Like you can amp things up. This right here is in Sky Fi Green. I'm telling you, the packaging is beautiful every single time. This right here basically includes um, green and like mustardy, yelly, yelly, yellowy tone colors. 
I believe this one right here is called VR Neon. So we basically get a bunch of neon shades in here. At times I'll use this on its own, but I'll also mix this with other palettes. Pretty good palette for being a neon palette. I have to have to give it to them, let me tell you. This one right here is Cyber Bronze. And then here is what this one looks like. Again, a very unique because it includes neutrals, but then pops of something extra. This one right here is called Astro Pink. Probably my least favorite in regards to color story. But here is what it looks like. And then we have Electro Turquoise. And this one right here is just a good summer palette. Like, there's a vibe with this one. Okay, back here I have this Storybook Cosmetics Burn Book. Here is what the palette looks like. I don't use it often. It's more like for decoration purposes. But um, I think it's really pretty. It's a very cute one. And I love that, the fact that it looks like an actual book. Next, we have this palette right here from Too Faced. It is the Clover Eyeshadow Palette. Here's what this one looks like. I used to be very into this like when it came out, but I don't feel like I reach for it way too much. I really just keep it for like the cutesiness purposes, you know? Then I have the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette here. This was limited edition. It came out, I want to say, three holidays ago. Really pretty. You can do so much with this. It's pretty much like a nice warm tone palette with pops of like... Um, golds and purple tone shades. This right here is the Gingerbread Extra Spicy Palette from Too Faced. So slightly different. I always um, say that these palettes are like sister palettes to each other because they look very similar, but they're also different at the same time. And then this right here is the newest one, the one that came out this past year, the Pumpkin Spice Palette. I love it. It's such a good one. I got tons of use out of this one. It smells so good too. You get greens, purples, and pinky toned bronzy type of shades. Then I have these palettes right here by Too Faced as well. So eight of them. Shake Your Pom Poms is such a good one. It's a beautiful neutral palette. Oof, mine broke a little. But you can create a ton with this. Perfect for a day-to-day -day look and easy to work with. Let's Play is more of a newer palette to me. I love the packaging. It's so cute. It kind of reminds me of like a Game Boy, obviously. But it brings me back to my childhood. This right here has more of like the pinky toned, berry toned vibe. Pretty great formula. I like it and it's very pretty on. Light My Fire is not my favorite from these little ones. I just feel like it's very like generic, very like very much so the same to so many other palettes. So I don't really gravitate towards this one way too much. I feel like there's so many other ones that, you know, I would feel more inspired by, but it's still pretty cute and I have it for now. Hot Buttered Rum came out a little bit ago. This has more of like those rustic type of yellowy brown tones. Also stunning on, and it smells really, really good. It was limited edition though. Kitty Likes a Scratch is a very, also like a very neutral, more generic palette. So nothing too special with this one. I like that there's a black because it's a pretty good one to deepen things up with. But yeah, other than that, it's a very basic palette besides for the packaging being pretty cute. Next we have the Tickled Peach Palette. I think this was the first little one they came out with. And this used to be like my, also my date night alf uh, outfit, what? My date night palette along with the Jaclyn Hill Palette. I just loved the way this looked on the eyes. Easy to work with. It was limited edition, so I don't use it way too much. I really keep it a lot now for the packaging. Uh, next we have the Sugar Cookies Palette right over here. Very pretty. This right here, I would say, has more of like a cooler toned look to it once it's applied on the eyes. I mean... Easy to work with, pretty, no fuss, one, two, three kind of thing. Then I have the That's My Jam palette, which is a newer one to my collection. Really pretty. I love using this one. I feel like it's somewhat pretty unique um, in regards to like these little ones. And I love the way this looks on the eyes. It's, it's a good one. Okay, then I have all of these little ones right here from Natasha Denona. As you guys can see, these are very, very well loved. I have a full ranking video ranking most of these. I can't find my love palette, my little baby mini love. It's somewhere. One second. Okay, so here we go. Here is the mini love palette. I love these little ones. Next, I have my Natasha Denona palette. This is the Glam palette. This came out a few months ago. I quickly fell in love. This is your cool toned dream palette. You can do so much with this. I've gone to weddings with this. I've done neutral looks with this, more dramatic looks. A++ in my book, seriously. Heavenly. I also have the bronze palette as well from Natasha Denona, also one that I really enjoy. It's like a warm tone palette, but it's not an overdone warm tone palette. You know what I mean? I feel like sometimes certain palettes can be so overly like warm and it's like, whoa. But with this one, I feel like you get warmness, but not in an overwhelming way. It's so pretty. 
Then I have the Love Palette, which pretty much just includes mostly like pinky tone, purpley tone shades. It's not my ultimate favorite palette ever, ever, ever from her. I don't use it as much as the Glam and Bronze Palette, but I still do like it from time to time. It's a good palette to use with the like um, Mini Love Palette, but also nice to use on its own. Then I have the Natasha Denona Sunrise Palette. This was the first $65 palette that I purchased, I want to say. Here's what this one looks like. This one definitely has more of like a warmer vibe to it. I used to be more into this when it came out. Not, now not so much anymore, but still with the formula, amazing, great to mix and match with. And from time to time, I'll pop into this one and use it. And then this right here is the Sunset Palette, which is my only bigger like palette that she has, the $129 palette. And this was my like first official palette, like big, big palette from her. Um, this was just like my first $65 palette, but then this one right here was the bigger first one basically anyway this is really nice i'll be honest though if i um if i would have purchased this one first i probably would not have gone with this just because here i feel like there's somewhat pretty similar they have like a similar vibe going for both of them but i'm still pretty happy with both i like that i have one of her bigger palettes and um if i had to choose one i think i like this one a little bit more i think that i'm going to share with you guys my offer collection in a separate video so that i'll be like the palettes the highlighters and all of that i also have two of these Koki palettes here this brand is sold at rite aid they're fairly new-ish to me i still haven't had a chance to use them but i have this one right here really cute it's called pure magic and then this right here is arabian nights and here is what this one looks like. I think I like this one a little bit more. It's so pretty. All right, so we are up to the final drawer. Um, not the cutest organization, but not bad. This really belonged in the first drawer, I want to say, but I recently used it, so it was out of its place, I would say. This is the Nude Medium Palette by Huda. Love this one. It's such a good one. I think that her nude line is better than her like colorful line. You can do a lot with this one. It's definitely one of my favorites, I would say. One that I pull out very, very often. Next, I have this palette here from Pat McGrath. This is the Mothership Rose Palette, V11. I don't know Roman numerals, honestly. Love this, so pretty. It definitely leans more towards the mauve tone side, but I just feel super confident when I wear this. And um, the metallics in here are super saturated and gorgeous, and some of them have like cool shifts to them too. Pricey for sure, but... I can kind of see the, the hype around it. Next, I have the Urban Decay Beached Eyeshadow Palette. I really love this one. It kind of reminds me of like the Naked Wild West. It's so good. I wish it wasn't limited edition, but it was. Love the tones in here. They pair so beautifully together. One of my favorites for sure. Next, I have a Nabla Palette here. This is the Secret Palette. This is a good one. Everything I've tried from Nabla so far, I've been fully in love with. So we get like a neutral row here, more of a bluish greenish row here, and then more of like a goldeny rose gold like row here. That's how I see it, I guess. I like to mix and match these great metallics, great mattes, perfect for a day-to-day -day look. And if I want to go the extra mile with this too, it, it offers it all. Next, I have this palette right here from Pixie. It's more of a chlorotone palette. I forgot that I even had this one, I'm not gonna lie, but I love the tones in here. I feel like I have to get back to shop my stash. I wanted to for a while now, but it just never ended up happening. I just kind of feel like I used so much more of everything that I had and I just, it was never a forgetting point or there was, but not as much. Anyways, very pretty. Next, I have the toasted, tartly toasted palette here from Tarte. I really like this one. Very warm tone palette. I used to use this a lot back in the day. Now, not so, so much. But anytime I want to go for that like really like fiery hot look, I'll either use this or the Naked Heat. So really good, great formula. Next, I have the Elf Retro Paradise palette here. Not my favorite from them, really. I feel like the metallics are very thick. I want to say the mattes are the winners in here. But it definitely is a palette that takes me out of my comfort zone. So you could do a lot with this one. But I won't say the formula is like smooth beyond heavenly like luscious, you know. Next up, we have the Oma Beauty Black Magic palette. This is a beautiful neutral palette. Kind of reminds me of like KKW, like it's giving me that vibe, but it's so good. Again, neutral, but it looks pretty on, you know? Next up, we have the Makeup by Mario palette. So here's what this one looks like. We basically get lots of cream shades in here. I'll be honest with you, definitely not worth the money. I feel like we have a ColourPop vibe going on in here. If it would be maybe $20 cheaper, it would probably be more worth it. It's also more of like a one swipe swatch palette. I mean, it's pretty on the eyes, but 
I don't know if I would buy this again for the full price tag. Next, we have the Marc Jacobs Cherry Palette here. I know this was spotted at TJ Maxx for quite some time. I pretty much found everything in the line besides for this. I did purchase it from Sephora for the full price tag. I'm, I'm happy with it, so I don't like mind really, but it still would have been cool to find it in like discounted stores, you know? So pretty. I don't know why I just have the urge now to buy every single Marc Jacobs palette now on Sephora site for some, some reason. Love his color stories and I just love these tones. I put first impression up on this if you guys are wanting to see it, but such a good one. Next, we have this right here from Koki. This is the Artist palette, so it's more of like a peachy tone palette. I don't have the peach palette by Too Faced anymore. This right here kind of took place of that. I like it. I think it's a pretty good one for the drugstore. Pretty much mainly just includes mattes with two satins, yeah. I would have loved a little bit more diversity with this, but usually when I kind of pop into this one, it's more for more of like a natural look. Like I'm not gonna do the full shebang with this. Next, I have the Persona Identity 2 palette. Like I mentioned, I do love the Persona formula. I like the other palette a bit more, the five pan palette more than this one, but this one is still pretty good. You get neutrals and jewel tone shades in here. They do pair really well together and it's a good one. I usually use this for like a night out or something, which never happens, so I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> next, I have the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Palette. This is probably one I'm going to declutter in my next declutter video. I just don't reach for this anymore, really. There are, I want to say, four mattes in here and then mainly like jewel tone metallic shades. Pretty formula, somewhat pretty easy to work with, but I just don't reach for it. I don't know what it is. Like, I feel like there were other ones that just stole my heart. Next, I have the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. This isn't one I necessarily use often these days. It's very nostalgic for me because it was my second high-end palette. The first one was the original Naked Palette by Urban Decay. Um, I think back then I was very into this. Even though half the time it looked like someone punched me in the eye because I used to go ham with this shade right over here. But it's very muted and I just don't like love it as much. Or again, I'm just really keeping it for the nostalgic reasons. Like if you're looking for a neutral palette, this isn't one that I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, you need. I feel like there are so many other better neutral palettes than this. And then the final palette we have here is the Saharian 2 by Juvia's Place. Here is what this baby looks like. Not fully in love with this. I'm not like obsessed with the formula, I have to be honest. I feel like so many people are, but I don't know what it is. The metallics are just so thick very stiff and not that easy to apply i think the mattes are easier to work with so it's okay okay so that is pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed seeing my eyeshadow palette collection i hope you enjoyed seeing how like i organize everything i plan on doing a makeup collection video very very soon um it's been in the works for a long time let me tell you but hopefully in the next little bit so stay tuned for that i'm looking forward to reading your comments and i'll speak to you guys in my next video bye